Hey, this is Dino, and today I want to walk you through WebSocket support in Apogee. Um, you may not be aware, but Apogee has support for WebSockets. Uh, if you just Google for Apogee WebSocket, you'll come to this page that briefly describes the support for WebSocket in Apogee X and Apogee Hybrid. Uh, so both Apogee X and Hybrid support uh, HTTP and WebSocket protocols natively. You don't have to do anything special uh, in Apogee to use WebSocket. Uh, the client sends an upgrade request uh, to upgrade from HTTP to a persistent WebSocket connection uh, by sending the upgrade request header. And then the upstream system, uh, if it wants to respond affirmatively to that, can send back a one-on-one -on -one status code switching protocols and um, then the WebSocket connection uh, is established and the client can send uh, arbitrary messages to the upstream server uh, over that connection via Apogee. So there are some, um, some catches with WebSocket in Apogee uh, or some things that you ought to know. You can only use Verify API key and auth policies in your API proxies. Other pro policies are ignored. This is really for authentication on the upgrade request itself. Uh, policies do not get executed for each uh, message that flows through. Um, uh, some other information about revoking the connection or, or uh, closing the connection. One thing you'll notice is that in the debug tool, um, you'll see only one transaction for the upgrade request. So you will not see multiple distinct transactions for each message that gets sent over the WebSocket session. Uh, the documentation page includes a link to an example uh, in GitHub, which is now read-only, but there is a hyperlink to the current example. And this is something that uh, my colleague put together. There's a client that's written in Go uh, in Golang and a server that's written in Golang and there's, you know, some, you can build a Docker image and it actually feels to me like uh, there's a, a lot of commitment involved in using this example. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show you my own example rather than use the one that's linked from uh, the documentation page. Uh, I'm going to just show you one that I implemented. So this is a Node.js server, an example server. It uses Express, uh, that's sort of well-known uh, module in Node.js for HTTP server implementations, and also the WS module, which is maybe less well-known, but it supports WebSocket. The way it works is it's just a regular HTTP server. If you've ever used Express, this will look familiar. You can um, create uh, the HTTP server listening on a particular port, and um, in this particular case, the one interesting event that I want to handle is that upgrade event. When that happens, uh, what I'd like to do is um, initiate the handle the upgrade, initiate the web socket connection. Uh, and when that happens, uh, we have some events that we can handle in on that web socket connection. So that's on a message that is received and on uh, closing the connection. So uh, in, in these cases, when a message is received, I, um, this code will log a message and then it'll send back a response message, which really is just a timestamp plus uh, prepended to the, the message that the, the client sent in. Uh, and then on the close event, uh, really it just logs uh, a message. So we can see that working. Uh, here it's running right in my, my terminal. So I have, I have it running. Um, that code that I was just showing you. And I can use um, Postman. A, a recent version of Postman will have WebSocket support. So this is the address for that particular endpoint that's running on my local machine. And I can connect and you'll see uh, I got a message here in Postman that says it's been connected. If I look at my terminal, um, as expected, there's a log message that says, hey, we received an upgrade request. So we've established the, the connection. Now Postman is connected to this app running here. And at that point I can send uh, any message I like. Um, so I sent any arbitrary text and you'll see I got back as a response, 
a timestamp and then that text that I sent. And that will work with, um, with anything. So we can do uh, hello world, um, send that along, and we'll get back a timestamp with hello world. And this uh, console, uh, th these log messages are showing what the, uh, the WebSocket server running here on my workstation is receiving. Um, and then of course it's sending back that timestamped message. So you can see um, Postman works to connect to a WebSocket uh, system. When I disconnect, uh, the disconnect or close event uh, is received by that Node.js code and it logs a message as I showed you before. All right, so that's all of, um, that's just direct. Uh, that's how Postman connects directly to a WebSocket connection. How does Apogee fit into this? Well, I've got uh, an Apogee proxy uh, that I've called WS Passthrough. It is deployed at a particular uh, base path and uh, it proxies to that same endpoint, the endpoint of the system that is, uh, of the server that is running on my system. So it proxies to that uh, Node.js code that I, I just showed you. Um, so what does it do? What does this uh, proxy look like? Well, it's nothing exotic, really. You can see the base path. Uh, it doesn't have any policies except for um, a header injection policy that adds a header uh, on the response to the upgrade request. In the target endpoint, I just specify the um, endpoint for that WebSocket server, uh, and this is HTTPS. Remember, this is this is a real HTTPS um, endpoint, and it will respond to receive an upgrade request and respond to that, and then establish the the persistent um, WebSocket connection. So this is this is pretty simple, uh, just a pass through proxy. Um, I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll start a debug session, and. Um, And then we will use Postman to connect to the, um, the WebSocket server that I showed you through Apigee. So how will we do that? Rather than going direct to this address, we'll go to the address of the Apigee endpoint. So uh, let's try that now. Yeah, I'll connect. And as before, Postman is showing the message saying, we're connected. We're connected to that um, Apigee hosted endpoint. If I flip to my console um, that is showing the Node.js server, it, it has received another upgrade request. So that's a new inbound request to uh, establish a WebSocket connection, which it responded to. And so now Postman is actually connected to the this upstream server through Apigee. So now what I'll do is, uh, again, I'll send the, the message, and this is hello world. So this is what got sent out. And then the response is um, a timestamp and hello comma world. Um, and of course, this is um, WebSocket through Apigee. Um, that's what we're seeing here. If we flip over to the actual terminal, um, you can see that it received a hello world and a WebSocket through Apigee request. Um, so all of that, you know, works as expected. Um, you know, connect, send messages, send repeated messages, and then uh, disconnect if you like. Uh, in the proxy, uh, sorry, in the debug session, we can see the, um, the WebSocket connection. And uh, this, is the, this is the upgrade request. It's coming in, you can see all the, the headers. Um, it's requesting an upgrade on the WebSocket connection and um, that gets sent, of course, to the upstream system, which is here. Uh, and um, that's accepted, the upstream system. That is to say, my Node.js server responds with a 101. 
um, and then this proxy just adds in uh, a header in the in the response. So pretty simple. We don't get to see all the different web service, uh, sorry, web socket uh, conversation in the debug session. Just the upgrade, uh, but that's just the nature of WebSocket. Okay, so uh, I hope this has been helpful. I will post as comments to this video uh, a link to a GitHub repo with the example API proxy, which is very, very simple. And um, the example Node.js WebSocket server, and you can try this yourself. Works with Apigee X and Apigee Hybrid. I um, hope you, this has been helpful. Till next time, keep it digital.